Hello everyone and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragons. Today we're playing as Lamb Juts on Nuclear Winter is Coming, so a very big, very spread out map, particularly for a one-on-one. -on -one. We are capping Echo with Command Infantry, Führung's Grupa, and we also have a CV headed over toward Bravo. A holding force headed toward Foxtrot. I'm not trying to push into India here, I just want to hold on this side and maybe make use of some nice mobility and uh, hopefully some good tactics over in the Alpha Charlie side of things to get some good work done there and win over on the right hand side. So I've, I've had decent luck pushing through here before but it tends to be a bit of an all-in and not my, my favorite way to play this map, at least not at the moment. So we do right away encounter a problem, made me really miss that uh, Blue Dragon's Ninja, but my Tiger and the K-52 get into a sparring match. The thing is, Eagle of Fives have 26-25 meter range and my Stingers have 22-75, so even if they have higher accuracy, that's going to be a problem, and right away the Tiger and the Bow, that dedicated anti-helicopter squad there, just get completely taken out, about a 200 point cost for me as well, and my Yegri and the Lynx are on their own. Of course, the first buy here is going to be a Peace Rhyme, trying to just get some answer for this, as well as, you know, maybe getting use out of it later for anti-tank purposes, and, you know, four, four anti-helicopter missiles should be fine, although only two of them will be able to get on the way before we pass the thing, so first one's a swing and a miss, second one is a hit, and the K-52 goes down, Peace Ryan evac ordered, and just in time as a Yak-141 is coming in trying to get some sort of revenge. So, not quite able to do it, but we still are a bit at a loss over in Delta. Capping Bravo does give us a plus one, but I was expecting Golf to be capped any second, and an immediate buy here, some Recon Infantry and MD Jupiters trying to secure common points for the Red 14 to push. Uh, I've seen, you know, troops automatically on their way toward the right-hand side of Alpha, which is what the Scout Defender is over there to prevent. But instead we have a huge push coming in, looks like a mechanized and armored push coming in from the Red 4 player here down the straight. And this was something I really I wasn't terribly well prepared for. This holding force is pretty decent, but there's a lot here. I mean, there's a Tungushka M that's visible, a couple of BMD-1Ps, a Skrejit, and I think there's also a tank back there as well. Yes, by the look of it right there. And we should be spotting and identifying him pretty soon. <clears throat> the little bit of fire from the Flux Milans was decently effective, and the Jaeger as well decently effective at pushing these guys over into the woods. You can see a whole bunch of infantry dismounted here, Strelas, Sapri, probably should have been dismounted directly in the town, but uh, you know, they are moving toward it, and those Sapri will be very difficult to fight uh, person to person. In the meantime, Spetsnaz grew engaging with my Jaegeri, but they're moving through the town, not block to block, which means that despite the Gru's Dragonov, we will be getting a pretty good engagement here with the IMG-3 at long range. So Spetsnaz grew already down to half strength and certainly not looking all that, uh, all that good at the moment, but my Flux Milans are getting killed. I don't really have all that much else here that can really take a shot, and a couple decent hits in the T-72Bs unfortunately isn't going to be enough. So. Uh, coming in with the Peace Rhine, we do take out that tank once again, so we'll see the Yak is not able to answer, so Peace Rhine, two for two, we'll see if we can keep score a little bit, but there was some AA in those woods that uh, did come chasing up the Peace Rhine later on, so that will be something we have to be aware of moving forward. In the meantime, my resources here are moving up, but Dornier 205 taken down by something near the town, probably, yes, it looks like that scratch it there. Yeguri, very successful here, we're able to take on the Spetsnaz Gru and clear out Razvitka as well. Um, just superior training and the tertiary making the difference there. But, you know, this is all this is all well and good. If we can't hold in the straight, it's not going to be worthwhile. Drakken 1 is coming in and trying to get a nice bombing run. Bombs are dropped. One hit and two hits, down goes the Drakken 1s. And only token success there, so a couple of infantry killed. Very much not worth it though, and Togoshka M and the Strela 3 very much in a, in a very happy place. VDV, meanwhile, have made it into the central town. BTRT is taken out by Yegri, which is pretty nice, but, uh, I mean, Yak-141 coming in and my Peace Rhine is not enough to take that guy down. The Peace Rhine was called in to go after the visible Tungushka. I don't know if this was a bait for my opponent, but it was very effective, and the Gepard does not have the range to provide great fire against the Yak-141. So, at this point, I've lost the town, uh, you know, Holding that forward section of Fox Trot, something you always want to be doing as a Blue Ford player, because these woods and this town are where you'd rather be fighting to make sure this zone is secure, and I have not been able to manage it. BMD 1P is opening for the Conqueror's missiles as well, might be able to get the looks, but uh, he does just barely get away. In the meantime, we do have Jaegeri moving forward. I thought maybe the sheer amount of stuff in the center here might mean that he doesn't have excellent flank defense, and in fact, the Jaegeri are able to get through. 
as well as we have a scout defender heading down this way, as golf has still not been capped. Um, struck me as a little weird. You'll want reinforcements coming in from golf instead of all the way back in the hotel to fill out this side of the map, and that kind of gave me the sneaking suspicion uh, this is going to be a game over on that main side, and if I can push forward here, probably can get some good use out of it. So as it turns out, he did have some forces sort of spread throughout these towns, but really not that much. Yeagery are going to be pushing forward, just trying to passively scout the MD Jupiter as well, passively, well, I guess face-checking anything that might be there. And now we have reinforcements coming up. So infantry and martyr twos, these are excellent fire support platforms. Of course, 7532 armor profile and that 7 frontal armor is absolutely amazing for making uh, kinetic weapons ineffective. The scout defender able to stun a BMD 1P, second volley, not enough to get the kill, and probably shouldn't have been shooting at that hard of a target either, as these guys, I mean, 2 frontal armor is the reason why the scout defender wasn't able to quite do all that much. I just wanted to see what was up here, and we will be coming back pretty soon uh, toward golf. So at this point I was a little nervous, right, because we have smoke coming in from, uh, actually I think that's my smoke, just trying to block them off, but uh, infantry moving forward, now Yegri are going to be able to do decently well holding in the woods, but not providing much fire support there, and it was the looks that was already taken out, so that was the reason why that infantry push was really struggling. So Martyr 2 is moving up and around, Penzergren moving through, trying to secure the center town and forest, and yeah, so it was actually my, my enemy's smoke there and my own. Mortars are opening up, trying to stun anything that might be behind it, making it less effective uh, as the fight goes on. So, um, now we have a defensive screen here, the MD Jupiter on the side, Yegri and Fox Milan sort of holding the center point. These guys will of course be able to fire across the open stretch, and supported by Jaeger to make sure that no infantry gets through either. Uh, TBZ Fox Milan is moving up with more reinforcements, and I'm trying to plan a counteroffensive here, so we have smoke coming in trying to sort of cut the distance between the woods and the town as Panzergren are moving up. Fleckpanzer is able to dodge a little bit of enemy artillery fire, but we have a bomber coming in by the look of it, and let's see what he's trying to do. Not quite sure, maybe going after the martyrs. Critical incendiary, but not enough to take him down, which kind of surprised me a little bit. And the Fuchs Milan's getting ATGM covering fire will be very nice. That was actually the Tungushka, and down it goes to a single Fuchs Milan, which was, I mean, that, that made me very happy. Panzergren sparring with VDV is not going to be great as, you know, Panzergren are in the open field, and it looks like only one of them is getting shot. Sapri also moving forward, and this will be absolutely brutal once those napalm rounds get online. So, geez, look at that. Three kills in the blink of an eye, and another volley off, and now the Jaegeri are moving forward, force pathing them, trying to get them into the town to avoid the same fate as the Panzergren, and the Fuchs Milan's moving up, but a T-72B is going to answer, and that's not going to be a lot of fun. So, one, two, actually both of those hit. Very nice. Maybe the Fuchs Milans will be able to do something. I mean, he's worried, wasn't able to land his shot, but it uh, looks like Smoke does block that off and prevent the Fuchs Milans from maybe getting a kill. Martyr 2 goes down to the VDV, so that's the Vampire Excellence anti-tank vehicle, uh, sorry, anti-tank missile, rather. But Yegri are able to finish off the VDV and Sapri, so we have resecured that forward position for right now. In the meantime, I have more Yegri moving up through to India, trying to prevent a buildup of forces there, should my opponent decide that it's time to retreat. Scout Defender is still just hovering over golf. I figured I can just leave him here. That way I'll at least know if and when this gets capped. Maybe I'll be able to bomb or artillery something, uh, find their CV, do something with it. Scout Defender moving up as well on the side, and Yegri just pushing farther forward, because why not, right? We've definitely seen more reinforcements come in this way. There's another T-72B that's giving me a little bit of a, of a headache here at the moment. This guy's a 90-point tank. He should be able to outduel my Leopard 1A5 and 16 AP versus 18. Uh, I think I have a better rate of fire. That's interesting. 10 versus 8, so we'll take a lot more shots. But Spetsnaz screw opening up on my Jaegeri, and that will be a problem because of... Uh, I believe there's sniper rifle on the Spetsnaz screw. Yeah, it should be. Um, so they are moving back, just trying to grab the last little bit of that town. I should have had more Panzergrand up here. My Jaeger could have moved up, but I really just wanted this fallback position uh, in Fox as I was beginning to get, the, to get the sense, particularly as Alpha's capped by a Leopard 2, that, well, maybe if I can just if I can just keep holding in Fox and just keep, keep, keep holding in Fox, um, Alpha, maybe Delta, maybe even Charlie if I'm feeling particularly ambitious, could be the way that we find uh, that we find a win in this game. So, ticking out a plus three, 158 points to two, as my opponent has still not capped golf, and 
this was going into the territory of I wasn't quite sure what was going on, right? I was like, I don't know, is this is this just you know, complete big brain tactics that I wasn't prepared for? Is this something that's, you know, there there's a trick up this guy's sleeve? Or it's just something I had never seen before that would come back and, and bite me in the ass. But as it turns out, I, I think it was just um, I think it was just he had intended to push through Fox with that initial spent, right? There was a lot of stuff here that was trying to push right through Fox, wasn't quite able to do it, and probably also uh, foiled his ambitions in Delta, killing that KA-52 and the, and the Spetsnaz crew that were in here as well. So I think it was just that going wrong that he wasn't really sure how to recover from. So if it were me, I would have capped India, I would have capped Golf, probably not in that order, I would have capped Golf for first, used it to get some troops up here uh, to start securing this side of the field, definitely capped India as well, or, I don't know, because if I don't have much in Charlie, I can't I can't respond with Charlie, but he was fighting me near Fox, so an India cap, in theory, should be safe, it, it wouldn't have been because of the Jaegeri, but he had no way of knowing that at the time, and, and now we do have some defensive units, there's a Skrejit, blocking off Yegeri from moving through where they did, right? It's just a little too little too late. So, uh, difficult to say what would have been better there, but I, I think I think this was just a way, way, way what's going on from, from both of us. He wasn't quite prepared for it, I wasn't quite prepared for it. Uh, sometimes that's how it is. So, Yegeri moving up to help the Yegeri in these woods, as there was a little bit of enemy action on that uh, far side of Delta. Didn't really want that to come between me and what's becoming a you know, halfway to victory sort of game. Smoke going in, and I'm just trying to block off line of sight here. Well, actually no, sorry. His smoke is blocking line of sight. Mine is trying to get some infantry kills in the wood, uh, woods. And I think we actually did kill some Spetsnaz group. So, you know, M125 for the win, I guess. 3 HE power. Not usually that deadly, but uh, when I was on neutral, I think... And you can check it after as well with the, the kills and losses section. But I think he did get a kill shooting at these woods, and it was a good thing we were suppressing there, because that's where there's an infantry push coming out of, but we're now taking out a plus five as Fox has been secured, Alpha's been secured, still moving up a little bit here in Charlie as well, but T-72B coming in again, more infantry coming in again, and he's trying to counter fire my mortars, but I don't think he quite saw it, because that looks a little bit shallow. Spetsnaz Gru get wrecked by Jaegeri, and that mini-me just... The mini-me and the MP5 are brutal against infantry in the open field, so very much should have been uh, snapped into one of these towns before he kept moving forward. So, MI-24V opening up with those Iglas is able to get my scout defender, but automatic coming up, and the range there on the automatic, as well as just the brutal shots from that main gun are going to be enough. We do take a shot from the T-72, and that's going to cause an immediate retreat here from the automatic as my Leopard 1A5 moves up, and the firing computer reset was probably what saved the automatic, otherwise that second shot very well might have gotten the kill, might have even gotten the leopard as well, but we do get that 90 point tank down. Yeagri are not going to be able to hold though, so we have lost that town again. It's just, this is kind of upsetting, but, you know, I, I'd spent on two command vehicles at this point, both Leopard 2s trying to resist artillery, bombing runs, things like that, as well as having some capabilities. Yeagri moving up now toward Charlie, and I thought, if I can get up to this corner, and there's not a lot going on, I might be able to, if necessary, cap Charlie, but we were at a plus five, 383 points, and uh, my opponent and I were chatting a little bit at this point, and he was just going, uh, I've kind of screwed the pooch on this one, haven't I? And I think, I think that's probably fair to say, because I don't think it was that conclusive on the ground quite yet. Maybe I'm misreading that, but my Jaeger are getting shoot through, my Jaeger got bombed, uh, there's another bomber coming in, and... You know, automatic will probably get revenge there, maybe? No, actually, it gets out, and... Well, I'm not quite on target, so I don't know. I mean, it's not like I had any way of pushing toward India. He still has a foothold in Fox. If he had spent the points to get some sort of defense in Charlie, we could very well have seen you know, a long stalemate in this game, but even that would have been you know, a stalemate, not recovery from being 450 points down in a 500-point game. So um, he would have had to bull through Fox. He would have had to potentially even just kick me out of Echo. But that wouldn't have ended it, because I still have Bravo, I still have Alpha, I still have another deployment zone on the other side, and that's pretty good security for a one-on-one, -on -one where oftentimes you only have that one spawn, and if you lose that, you're kind of toast. So, 
more mortar fires coming in, trying to hunt after that automatic again and again and again, keeping him panicked though, and he's not able... Okay, so he's just as able to start repairing, so only two strength left. It was a very near kill there, so that would have been pretty nice. Yeagri are up here spawning my enemy's deployment, not quite able to get shots in the T-72BU, so could have used some sort of recoil as rifle there, but that plus five ticking is going to end the game. So, bit of a weird one. It was very tense at first, especially when I did lose a fair amount of my helicopters, and you can see from the kills and losses, this is pretty close, 880 to 895, and I was on the bad end of that too, so technically down by 15 points there, but I mean, we just capped better, and you gotta play the game mode that you're playing, right? So, in terms of high-performing units, the piece ranked very well before it did get killed by the Yak-141. Yegri-90 did exceptionally well. BTRT, Sepri, VDV, Skrejits, uh, PTUR, Conquers M. Amazing work by the Yegri in the forward town, as well as the Yegri on the other side. I really like these units. I tend to find that they perform quite well. Martyr 2s did not make their worth up, and neither, the, neither did the looks or... Uh, I guess the Leopard 1A5 did. So that's all we've got for you guys today. Thank you all for hanging around and uh, for checking out this little bit of an oddity of a Wargame Red Dragon replay. So we'll see you again real soon.